What's up everybody, Tom here with another video. In today's video, we'll be talking about everything to do with the markets right now, including our thoughts on the S&P 500, NASDAQ, Bitcoin, US oil, silver, gold, and more. Kathy Wood's come out and she said, as long as we don't fall into a recession, we're in a long bull market. What does this mean? Does this mean multi years? Does this mean 12 to 18 months? Or could it mean a decade plus? In this video, we'll discuss some of my thoughts along with the technical analysis right now for the markets. Stay tuned, guys. There's a lot to cover. See you soon. All right, everybody. Well, this begins our market recap for the markets close 17th of November 2021. And you'll notice here it was a mixed result. Apple broke out past that 150 finally. Did a little bit of a good day. We do have a plan on that one for the end of the year. Hopefully it continues its bullish movement here. Tesla rebounded back to that 1100, then sold off at the resistance that we expected. And we had Nvidia coming into the earnings result 3.12% down. So it ended up down, but after the result, it pretty much went straight back up. Let's take a look at the overall indices and see which sectors were also doing well. NASDAQ finished basically flat, S&P 500 down 0.26, and IWM took the big brunt of it, down 1.31%. Is it coming back to the buy zone? We'll be taking a look at that soon from a technical perspective. Let's look at the sectors in which we're performing. Gold, the GDX did the best. Real estate did okay. Consumer discretionary, thanks to Tesla, is a backup. And where we saw the weakness was actually energy with US oil really getting flogged through the session and XLF, the financials down. Now that's off Amazon in the UK basically saying, you know what, Visa, we're not going to use you anymore. Bad luck. Too bad, so sad. In Australia, I can tell you that Visa is surcharged on all transactions. And it's kind of ironic because isn't Visa the partner of Amazon for their credit card in the US? It just shows you some weird things can happen. But does this paint the picture of these payment gateways moving forward? Maybe large companies like Amazon, SE, other large payment, or Alibaba, all of these types of places may start to accept less and less. It's always been inclusion. We can really take anyone's payment, but maybe they're going to start to really dial in on having their own payment system or partners that they make sweet deals with. Will that be something? Let's hear your comments in the comment section down below because we saw PayPal, Visa, and all other card companies really fall quite a lot due to this news announcement. Now, in terms of closures, we had NVIDIA. As we said, it kind of was a beat. The market seems to like the guidance in some ways, and it was floating around that $300 to 303 after the close. Cisco, however, did definitely miss. That was down around 6 to 7% after the miss of earnings. And we've got some big ones coming up. We've got Alibaba and we need to find out whether that is actually going to hold true. Remember, Alibaba has been one of these really big stocks. The Chinese stocks have been coming under a lot of fire recently, and no one has been very happy with the results. We move over to the technical analysis now. Let's start talking about the US 10-year here. This is the inflation kind of reader at this stage. If it's going up, then of course, people believe there is a lot of inflation in the market. The US 10-year rate's going up at the same time. Could put pressure on the Fed. And we've come back down to test that previous resistance. So we've been speaking about this quite a lot. Let's get the two hour up, just re resurface that for a second. There we go. And you'll notice we have resistance, 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 support. This area here, very important for it to bounce back up if we are going to see continued strength here in the US 10 year. We'll continue to watch that one. Another one that has sold off a little bit has been the DXY. This is the US dollar in the dollar index form. Now, if you know, your technical analysis, you would have expected this. We still think that it goes to 97 plus over the long term, but it's hit that first level of resistance. So when we scroll out here on the daily, you'll notice previous support. So here's our support, 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 support on the weekly becomes resistance. It overshoots a little bit and then finds some sell-off pressure. Now, if we go into the smaller time frames, such as the four hour, etc., this is fully expected. We pull back maybe now to a four hour 20 around that 96 kind of area, 95, 60, I mean. And this zone could be where we see those bulls regain control of the dollar index. So certainly something that we're watching and the DXY is one of the better trades that we've had over the last two weeks. When we move over to gold, why has it rebounded? Well, a lot of it's got to do with dollar index weakness. Remember, it's gold versus the US dollar here. 
gold has gone back up to test this 1870 zone. And we spoke about the false breakout. We spoke about the fact that the market continues to play a little tricky here on the smaller time frames. Here's the resistance. Here's the false breakout that occurred. We're going back up there. It's unlikely to be a false breakout again, guys. So let's hope that we get that new high here on gold and we continue on to our eventual aims of 1910 and then possibly close in at the end of the year on maybe even a 1960 or 2000 plus. These are all very big possibilities now that we've seen gold break through that 1832. I can't state how important it is to recognize participation levels in the markets. Look how fast it went from here to here. Then possibly the movement from here to here will also be fast. We've seen it on US oil many times on this channel over the last year. How many times has it gone through a key zone, quickly moved to the next level? You've seen it in the stock market as well. It's something that you want to be able to spot as a technical analyst. Where's the participation? Where are the key weekly daily zones? We've also talked about the seasonal here. I'll just mention it for new members to the community. We have here the November into December runs that we've seen previously in gold and silver. Big November, December kind of spike, 17, 18, 19, 20. All were very big bullish years for from the November, December area. And I've spoken to a few pretty well-known people in the industry, and a lot of them believe gold stocks are going to have favorable kind of returns over the next three to six months. What do you guys think? Let us know. Silver also finding some great support here. This one, I've got to say, perfect. Resistance, resistance, support, support little bit of a bounce off. Hopefully now we can move through 2540 and that's where that participation zone, we believe, will be found from a technical level. The potential there is right around that 2540. We're hoping to see some action around that zone. Let's move over to US oil. Now US oil, it's been quite weak. And have we seen it on the charts? Yes, we have. Rejection, rejection, big rejection on the weekly and the follow through. We knew as a community, you guys called it, 85.50, it hit around that 86 resistance. It started to weaken and that is the most logical place after such a huge rally for us to then find the weakness. Now, we saw weakness after that huge rally, reprice up to 77, came back down, created a really nice pattern, moved back up. So that's the type of thing that oil traders are looking for now. This 77 is a big deal. It was previous resistance back in 18, resistance again here in 21. Will it act as support? Well, oh, I'm not so sure. I would want to see a little bit more. Remember, we already came down once before over here. And now we've come down again. We're looking for that double bottom, that lightning bolt style, or the channel consolidation, or even inverse head and shoulders, similar to last time over here on the left-hand side. Oil traders might have to wait a little while to find their bullish intentions, but it is back at where we thought it would get to, which is that previous roll reversal zone. We'll walk over here to Tesla. Let's take a look at what's going on in here in the charts. So a bit of a bounce off the thousand. We saw the put wall here, huge amounts of puts being set for the thousand dollar expiration. We did not think it could get through a thousand because of that reason. It's a key psychological. People are keen on Tesla right now, even with Elon selling into it and the other CEOs. And realistically, this area here becomes a potential double bottom. We've got now a rejection twice from a thousand. We've gone to the 1100 and slightly rejected it through the previous session. So this could act as a potential here for a bit of a base. Do we see base formation, break of 1100, then push to that 1240 zone again and possibly all time highs? It'd be earlier than I expected to do it, but hey, anything's possible with Tesla. We thought that we'd consolidate here for a little while. If it chooses to bounce and then move through, so be it. At this stage, you're looking at that resistance at 1100, and I totally get why some people would have taken profit and why the market moved down just near that close period. You can see that last four hours of trade was not exactly strong. It was all strong in always strength in the morning. Apple, another one that's broken out here, got through that 150. Here's the downward trend that we spoke about in the live sessions on the other channel. We moved through this series of resistances we had that little bit of consolidation and then what a spike up for the trade session. If you were day trading this, congratulations to you. Apple ended up closing at around that 153.50 zone. And if we go over to the weekly, does this bode well for it? Well, I think it does. And I think it puts in the territory of the potential now for Apple to get up to that 165 area that we hoped it could do so. Remember, Apple's been 
unimpressive investment for the last 12 months. Some people may argue with me, but I look at the facts. If you bought the wrong price back in August of 2020, you bought it at 137. Is it up? Sure, it is. But at that point, you're not looking at the same return. So sometimes pinpointing the correct investment levels, these, these nice stop levels or these nice trend line levels can get you a much better price. And it's kind of like Amazon. It hasn't actually done that much in one year's worth of time. So imagine if it gets fired up, this $2.5 trillion company could move all the way up, move back to that 160, 165 area or up to that 165 for the new all-time highs. And it's certainly looking like it's trying to break out at this stage. And that will be dependent on our market indices, things like the NASDAQ, S&P 500, etc. Move over to IWM. When we talk about this one, what else can you say other than it's pulling back to the zone that we thought it would? Previous resistance breakout highs up here. We've got this box, this green structure. It's just reached into that. Some people will have their orders around this level for looking for strength here from the IWM. I certainly wouldn't blame them. Once you break out of a huge range like this, you do tend to go A equals B, but you've got to be patient. It can take time to get that kind of thing going through. I wouldn't be surprised even for it to go down to a 230 before going back up, but I do think we're in a bit of a sustained run and I hope that this can find the strength in it over the next month or so. We're in a seasonal strength here. We've said on the channel a few times, if you look at the stats, November tends to be pretty good for IWM and so does December. So both months have good seasonal or seasonality to them. With the strength of the breakout, we hope that continues and we'll continue to follow it here. QQQ hits the top of the channel. Again, this is our big ascending channel here. I call it the community ascending channel because you guys and have been using it for so long as a technical analysis tool. It's been really good at picking the tops of markets. It's picked it again here, it's sold off, it's come back up. It's now or never really for the bulls and the bears. If the bears are gonna win, they're gonna to have to try to push this market down at this stage. And just remember, if they do push it back underneath these lows, what's really happening there is a double top. So if they pushed it back underneath this 20, it's realistically going quite far down. In fact, it may even go through back down to this 373. So don't get super bullish as soon as it goes through that, if that ever happened, because that would not be that positive for the markets. Now, if we keep grinding up higher and we breach a new top, you've got to expect a couple of nice days of green bullish pressure as the rest of the market says, okay, cool, onto the next zone. So it's gonna be a very interesting time here for the QQQ and the same with the S&P 500. The potential for the double top is there. We detailed that yesterday. If it comes down the double top bottom, where's that support gonna be? Right on the 20. A lot of people are gonna to try to buy that area. I can imagine they will. But if it closes underneath there, where does the next level go? back down to the previous resistance as the 50. And I think this is giving us the strongest signal if we do get confirmation either way. S&P also rejecting that monthly R1, that's the little dotted line here, often a very good area to be targeting. But I do wanna remind everybody that in general, markets do like to come back to their central pivots. That's these blue lines here. In general, the market will like to come back to the central pivot. Where's the central pivot for the month of November? it's down here. Should we break and breach this R1? Do I think the market continues to go up for a few days from this potential? Yes, you're breaking through a massive trend line we've used for so long. This has been great, a break at, at really recognizing the peaks. And if you breach it, well, you can't deny that. You always have to go with the trend. The price action is gonna show us that way. Picking turnarounds in the market is not easy. And therefore, if you're picking turnarounds in the market, you've got to have very good consideration. How many reasons can we find to potentially short the market? I'd be looking for at least four to five separated reasons that are all different to do something like this because you can't just use one. It will not work out for you. Remember, being an eternal optimist like Kathy Wood is the best course of action. I want to just bring this up as being an optimist here myself for quite a few years in the US market. In general, when you see a crash in the markets, which we experienced during the pandemic, it's very rare to see a second giant crash, as in a second 30 to 40% kind of drop off in the market. I don't even know how many times that's happened in time. Usually it's a fall, a recovery, a few years of growth at least. And in fact, there's usually quite a few years there of growth going into what could be an almighty crash. And don't get me wrong, I think in the future there could be a very epic crash 
due to things like the uh, Chinese real estate market really showing the cracks in it. Obviously, Evergrande is just the beginning or the tip of the iceberg there. And long term, that could be a big problem. But 30 to 40% usually is rebounded by quite large strength. She's caveated it as obviously saying, well, as long as we don't have a recession, well, of course, if we have a recession, we go, we go to crash. So as long as we don't have that, yes, I agree, it is going to go up. And my thought process is multiple years here of bullish, pros, bullish markets, but they won't be the same as what everyone's experienced. So we won't be 10, 20, 30% per year. I think we're going to go back to that kind of 4 to 10% per year market movement in terms of the upside with, of course, some great corrections. So if you kind of tend to agree with me, let me know. If you totally don't agree with me, that's fine. We'll find out what happens. It's all our opinions after all. And of course, it's great to have different opinions. And that's the whole point of trading and investing. You're meant to think, what is my plan over the multiple years? And then how can I potentially find better investments by following the price action and finding those dips within the year? Because remember, the average is around two to three dips per year that are quite large, two to three corrections. Let's move over to a correcting market at this stage, and that is Bitcoin. We've seen pretty nice price action off the low here. So here's the 50 exponential moving average. We were unable to breach it on the daily. We've got one rejection week, two rejection weeks, and a little bit of follow through. Now, do we get that follow through today where it pushes up? You'll notice I've got $61,500. So 61.5 is really a very key zone here on Bitcoin. And if we breach past that and close above it, let me just show you on the smaller time frames what that means. We'll go down to the one hour. Let's check it out together. So we've got great consideration here down the bottom. Let's think about what's happened. Every time it goes down here, buy week, bullish pressure, buy week, buy weeks, buy weeks. So there's a lot of buyers down here. Close underneath this zone of 58,800, I guess, is a big deal. We get underneath there, boom down we go but if we breach back up above 61.5 what have we done broken through all these previous resistances we've created an accumulation base and we've really said okay that's the pullback we were going to get now let's make a move to the next zone and i am bullish bitcoin into the end of the year so i hope that this does happen and if it does pull back through that 58 plus below then we're talking 52 54k and i believe that's where it should stop that's around where that 20 plus percent decline is and as we know in any good crypto crash they usually go between 20 and 30 percent long if you're not ready for something like that you possibly shouldn't be trading crypto because it's pretty normal for it to crash around 20 to 30 percent it happens all the time let's think about the ethereum crash so far that's about 16 percent down it's bounced off the 50 as well i think this is trading very similar to bitcoin so really was the 20 a big sell-off area absolutely 20 to 50 very predictable but bitcoin is the one this zone here it's all about it look at it daily big rejections right around that area if you close below watch out down below is what i would say hopefully you enjoyed the video guys if you did please remember to subscribe smash that like button i appreciate each and every one of you out there for your comments your subscriptions your support of the community and just in general being awesome. So I wish you the best and I hope you've been on a winner over the last week. Bye for now.